Wow, okay. Sphinx and Rasta. Sphinx guides her. Oh, past the bonfire party. Well, this party, I don't think it's ever going to end. Uh, and, and into the wilderness. Yeah, the Greek countryside. To his cave. Because uh, Sphinx as an uh, eccentric freak, uh, being around these main catacombs and all the hippies, uh, yeah, it's a little too much for him. Too publicly exposed, not free enough. So he finds his own natural limestone caves. I mean, a, a quarter of all the caves in the world are limestone. That's why they're caves. The wind whips it good. Carves out a cave called Wind Caves. And in his cave, oh, his his chosen cave, it's a beauty too, uh, inside. Oh, bats hanging upside down. Mm -hmm. Oh, spiders. Watch out for the scorpions. Um, mice, field mice. Uh, not for the faint-hearted. Uh, and in his chosen uh, Gnostic grotto, Sphinx fields. <sighs> Relaxed, yeah. Be calmed. He's got his private stash of, 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 of assassin hashish. He's got the 20,000 hits of crystal. Uh, so he can relax here when he traps. I mean, nobody can sneak up on him. He's got military binoculars. He, he can follow the movement of his flagship, the World Peace Yacht. And he's got to because that white crystal yacht's coming in in the morning. You can see anybody approaching from miles and miles and Ks and Ks, allometers away. And he likes the primal scream. He's got a big, big chest, huh? But nobody can hear him at all. And he can't hear any motor engine of any kind. <laughs> He's too far away from the village. Yeah. And the cave faces, I mean, we're on the southern coast of Crete, his homeland, Egypt, 900 kilometers from here. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's where the white crystal yacht, oh, it paused in Alexandria, rested. All those waves lapping at it, all the way through the Suez Canal, over and over again. A boat needed a break on this Pakistan to Greece hashish run. <sighs> Night breeze in the Aegean. <laughs> Mellow waves. <sighs> Against the shoreline of the Libyan Sea. That close to Africa, they call it the Libyan Sea. Shooting star flames to its duname, its conclusion, behind the Paxamedia mountain uh, islands off the coast, to the delight of the lovers. Yeah. Uh, well, where are you going after Matala? I mean, Rasta wonders, uh, his cave companion. I'm flying to Istanbul tomorrow afternoon. Come with me. I forgot such a great scene in the on the roof terrace penthouse of the Guhani Hotel. You'll be hearing all about that. Um, I'm lonely. And I could use your help. I'm going to be smuggling $200,000 in $100 bills. On the short air flight to... Uh, Istanbul, and uh, I need an erotic distraction. <laughs> You're perfect. Uh, look, they're too high to sleep. Uh, so they cuddle uh, in, in a melting embrace and uh, beside the glowing embers in his cave fire. Sphinx holds her warmly, protectively. Uh, she wraps her slender arms around you. Uh, Sphinx is gave uh, it's, it's it's highly supercharged with the spirit. I mean, he was taught yoga 
uh, by a holy man in Rishikesh where the Ganges River comes crashing out of the Himalayas right there. Oh, yeah, the holy man lying on the pathway there. What's he lying on? Bramble bushes? Why do they do that? Um, yeah, he, he got taught yoga. And uh, yeah, that, that Ganges River goes crashing down through the flatlands of Hindustan. And uh, yeah, 3,000 kilometers. This river? Before its wary molecules, I mean, H2O got whacked up there. Merge into the cyclone tortured Bay of Bengal. Well, look, we're here now. Okay. Uh, blue crystal water of the Aegean, no tortured molecules. The H2 also, like, yeah, H and O, and like, let's stick together and just water up the whole life of the earth. Um, welcomes the cave lovers in the morning. I mean, after that full moon. <laughs> In Matala, they wander outside uh, onto its cave porch uh, uh, in the flower meadow, oh, blooming with uh, psychedelic thistles and flowering mandrake root. Mm -hmm. Greeks are big on herbs, huh? Look at when you live in a cave. I ought to know. I lived in my Greek cave. Well, that's the whole book, Yearning for Earth Legs, about me living in my Greek cave <laughs> with Cleopatra as my love. Uh, we're in this book, too. We'll be coming <laughs> into this, too. Um, yeah, trippy. Uh, trip, you get trippy in living in a cave and dusty and scratchy, and you wake up rough and feeling, well... Hmm. Kind of untogether. So a trippy way to rebirth your body is to just take virgin Greek olive oil and smear it. Well, smear your lover with it from head to toe, and then she'll do you. And then meditate. Nude. In the warming. So, nude, fully lubricated.